Oh, I forgot to unmute. Hello. I hope this is working. I hope this is started. And, uh, oh. And yeah, uh, sorry for not doing this stream the last few weeks. Just super tired, super... Um, yeah, because if you notice, I made this really long uh, half an hour video and that took so much out of me that yeah, I, I just couldn't uh, do much else for this uh, for a while. But yeah, I hope. Um, but I'm back and I hope to finish the other, the rest of the poems in this series. Today, yeah, honestly, I don't know how many people are going to show up uh, considering uh, it's been so, yeah, it's not good to take an unannounced break, but. I like the poem, so let, I guess I'm fine doing this, even if it's just me. But of course, if any of you are here, oh uh, yeah, please feel free to, uh, yeah, just just comment and we can look at the poems together. So why don't I just start? Okay, sorry, just loading the this on my phones in case there's anyone in the chat. Okay, so. Uh, first, we have this poem by Meng Jiao, Lian uh, Cao, or A Song of a Pure-Hearted Girl. So, let's see what it, it goes. So, uh, Wu Tong Xiang Dai Lao, Yuan Yang Hui Shuang Si, Zhuo Fu Gui Xun Fu, She Sheng Yi Ru Ci, Bo Lan Shi Bu Qi. 切心井中水水 Laka trees ripen two by two, and Mandarin ducks die side by side. If a true-hearted girl will love only her husband, in a life as faithfully lived as theirs, what troubling wave can arrive to vex a spirit like water in a timeless well? Okay. Hmm. So first up, what... A laka tree. Maybe I'll just Google that, but uh, hang on now. Uh, just moving my setup a bit. Yeah, so I didn't know that any trees really live like. Eh? Ah, oh, God. Uh, I'm so bad of a Mac. Ah. Okay, let's see. Okay. No, come on. Ugh. Okay, Laka tree. Okay, I've never seen these in my life. Um uh, apparently they grow two by two. Oh maybe I have seen these. Wait a minute. Okay. Let's see. Ah. Uh, Interesting. So this is the tree. Oh, and apparently it's a it's a big it's been mentioned even in early Chinese poetry. So even in the the Shi Jing, the classic of odes, uh, it was part of um the the collection as an image. So this is this Wu Tong Wu Tong Sheng Yi. I don't know why the images are not loading. But there's a note which says that uh it was speculated that it grows by in twos, right? So one is speculated that like one is a male and one is a female. But actually, in fact, like on the same tree, they're both male and female, I guess male and female flowers. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um okay, I don't know why none of the photos are loading. Uh huh. Okay. I guess learn. This is a biology lesson today. But all right. Then so there basically the first sign is there are these trees who are uh yeah, who ripen two by two. I think that's a pretty decent description, a pretty decent translation. And then the next one, this Ren Yang, the Mandarin ducks, they're another symbol of I guess love. So yeah, just uh 
these two ducks that are I don't know, they, they're always in pairs, lah, basically. Yeah. So Mandarin ducks die side by side. Oh, wait. Oh. And then, uh, if a true-hearted girl will love only her husband, in a life as faithfully lived as theirs, so theirs here meaning the, the Laka trees and the Mandarin ducks, lah, right? So if, if the girl lives a life as faithful as the trees and the ducks, then, uh, yeah, what troubling wave can arise, can arrive to vex a spirit like water in a timeless well? There isn't actually the set, the timeless in the original. Uh, it just says the, yeah, but it's like a spirit of water, like water or in a well. It's like the heart, like a water in a well. So, okay. Hmm. I think it's a nice sentiment. I'm not sure how much this is uh actually actually I'm not sure if the if here is correct. I mean, you could read it as, so if, uh, so so this translation reads all this, the last four lines as a hypothetical, right? So if the, yeah, the chaste woman values her deceased husband, right? Okay. Oh, interesting. So this is deceased husband. So I guess this is a widow, actually. So if a chaste widow values her deceased husband, then, uh, she will I guess she will give up her life just like that. No way, wait. Is this actually a poem about like committing suicide after your husband dies? No, that's messed up though. Right? Because um even though the first line it translates that the it has ripened, I mean technically the word is old. So I, I could see it as like come of age, right? But actually, yeah, I suppose the more natural reading would in fact to be to uh grow to old age. And then the next line is to to die. So I think this is oh no, it's, I didn't know. Wait, so this is a poem about Okay, let's see what what uh mm... Yeah, okay, I think that's literally, that's actually what it's about. Hmm. I think, uh, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if there is the practice of, uh, let's say, like, ending your life when your husband dies, though. It seems like maybe it's more plausible that it's about just not marrying someone else or at least that's a hmm so here there's one interpretation which is that yeah just some okay okay so some right some is their husband dies and they remain unwed they do not marry again and some is it really is just that when the husband dies, then they just end their own life. I I don't like this uh sentiment. Uh. <laughs> Clearly, I think it's pretty. I mean, I it it doesn't seem like they expect the same thing of the guy. It's not like, oh, if I mean, well, by your logic, the trees and the mandarin ducks. Uh, they ripen, or they grow old in pairs, and they die side by side. Then, I mean, by that logic, the husband should also end their own life if the wife dies, right? But I don't think. I I feel like there's a double standard here. 
So yeah, okay, not not a definitely not a poem for our modern sensibilities. Uh. Oh, it's kind of damn. I think the translator was pretty wise to try to um to soften that sentiment. But when I read the actual Chinese, like it's it's rough, man. It's rough. Okay, I, I don't like this, but why don't we just look at some famous critics? Mm. Okay, just talking about how the use of the first two images uh, are pretty good. I mean, they are pretty standard images for romantic love. So, mm. Hmm. So basically, they're just saying it's well-written, well-constructed poem. I guess so. I mean, it is a pretty well-written poem, but the message is so bad that I can't really vibe with it, uh, for sure. Okay. That's... Um... Actually, let me just adjust my blinds for a bit, my window blinds. Yeah, sorry. It's been a while since I've done this, so it's uh kind of rusty and yeah. I do I think I would like to upgrade like my setup soon, like my I mean I'm using my webcam which is I have a nicer camera, but I'm just using my webcam for this and so I'm sort of hoping that the the audio quality can make up for the bad video quality. Anyway, it is because I'm going to be graduating soon and I'll be moving around for the next few months. So I don't want a very complicated setup for now, but I think once I get more settled down, I would like to, um, yeah, just have a better setup for when I do future streams. And, well, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So maybe I would keep this at least for the, until we finish all 300 poems. Well, actually it's like 320. But I think if I move on to another collection of poems in the future, I would probably, um, yeah, try to get a better setup. I think... Because personally, it's like, I know if someone else made a video like this, I don't think I would watch it. Yeah. But it's hard, lah. Please, please bear with me. I'm still learning to, on how to be a, a creator, I guess. And yeah, so, all right. That was sort of uh, a tangent. So now let's move on to this other poem by the same author, Meng Jiao, Meng Jiao uh, A Traverse Song, uh, Yu Zi Yin, Ci Mu Shou Zhong Xian, Yu Zi Shen Shang Yi, Lin Xing, Mi Mi Feng, Yi Kong, Chi Chi Gui, Shui Yan, Cun Cao Xin, Bao De San Chun Hui. The threat in the hands of a fond-hearted mother makes clothes for the body of her wayward boy. Carefully she sews and thoroughly she mends, dreading the delays that will keep him late from home. But how much love has the inch-long grass for three spring months of the light of the sun? Hmm. So this is not just a traveler. I think it's specifically, it's a song of a traveling son. Right, so it's a rogue traveling child. Troubling sun, troubling sun, and this is, um, yeah. I guess I guess song would work here. So the, yeah, the fond-hearted, the threat in the hands of a fond-hearted mother makes clothes for the body of her wayward boy. Right. So you see, this literally 
游子 traveling son traveling son. So, uh, but it gets the point across, I guess. A traveler. So carefully she sews and thoroughly she mends, dreading the delays that will keep him late from home. That's not, uh, okay. So I think it's Lin Lin Xin Lin Xin means that it's he's going to depart. So it's just before the the journey, and so she tries to sew to very tightly. So just to, I guess, yeah, just to fix, make sure the the clothes are sound, right? They're they're doing well, and then because she is afraid that, hmm, interesting. So as she's doing that, her mind is fearful that he will return, uh, take a long time to return. So so there's a parallel here in the structure. So, Lin Lin Xing, Mi Mi Feng, Yi Kong, Chi Chi Gui. So you see, there's a repetition of the mi mi and the chi chi. So I think it's a very interesting, uh, I think it's very very wonderful way of uh, really depicting the psychological state, right? It's like it is sort of saying, okay, so she's weaving it tighter and tighter, or like just, I guess tighter and tighter. Is there denser, more and more closely? So she's trying to make the, she's doing more sewing. It's a reflection. Like the more she sews, the more is a reflection of. Was a reflection of how much more she is sort of worried. Ah, she she, of how long he will be away. She so the more she. The more she fears, the more she sews. Yes. So yeah. Yeah, I quite like that, and then uh. Shui Yan Cun Cao Xin, so Bao De San Chun Hui. Hmm. Okay. So here, very interesting, right? Now here the image comes at the end. Usually the image, uh, comes at the beginning of the poem. But here we have the analogy, right? So how much love has the inch long grass? So the inch long grass, um, is the child. So here. It is is actually the inch long grass heart. Hmm. So, hmm. Okay, why don't we go to the next line first? Because it's a connected thought. So, uh, Bao De San Chun Hui so is able to, uh, return, uh, return the. So usually. In Mandarin, you say like "bao en," right? You just if someone has done good for you, you repay them that um that favor. So th- I guess "repay" would be a good translation. So who says so is able to repay the uh radiance of the three spring months? I th- I think the analogy is clear here, right? The the inch long grass is the child, and the spring months, or the sun, I guess, is the uh, is the mother. Uh, yeah, I think I really like these two lines. I really like this song actually, maybe because I'm. <laughs> Also going to be traveling soon, but uh, well, first I think it's really interesting that they move the image to the back. That's quite unusual, and hmm, I wonder what's the point or why they do it. Because you could imagine you start by saying like. Oh, I see the grass, and then do do they repay the three spring months? And then you go into the the actual thing about the po- the mother, right? Sewing. Hmm. I think. Hmm. 
How much love has it interest? Why is it better to put it at the back? I don't know. Let's let's keep reading. Maybe I'll figure that out. But yeah, if we continue, we have um All right, I was listing the reasons why I liked it. So first, I do think it's very interesting the way they flip this. And next, I think it just really captures the... I, I think this is... Even though theoretically it's about the traveling sun, right? But I think it's really about the, the mother. So it's about how she feels when the sun is traveling and yeah it's mm. Mm. Sorry, I just got distracted. I feel like it's, it's just so good. <laughs> wow. Mm, I think I like that. It's comparing the... I guess the it's comparing the... the love of the mother to like, you know, the son. I mean, usually, if you compare like a loved one to a son, you would think like, oh, Juliet is the sun, right? So it's a a romantic kind of love. But this is more of a nurturing love. It's it, it sustains, but also it gives life. Yeah. So I think definitely a very interesting use of the sun imagery here. And Mm. I think just just the, the 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 image of like the child as a just grass, whereas the actually I, in my head at first I was thinking this was one blade of grass, but I suppose it could be just a lot of grass, right? But, mm. but anyway, I think that it's just very well done the way they. The parallelism here is also really good, where you have an inch, and then you're is uh, sort of contrasted with three, right? So there's like inch grass, and there's three spring months. So just a very very well constructed poem, I would say. And yeah, why don't we look at some comments uh, from here? Oh gosh, I'm really taking. Uh, uh, might need to speed up a little, but yeah, really good, really good poem. Um, there's one point up there where they said the grass is actually like. The grass is like the filial piety, and then the spring months is the the um the the mother's love. Yeah, so I think that, but actually, that's pretty much what it's saying. I think first I was like, this is the person. the The grass is the sun, and the spring is the mother. But I guess they're saying this grass is the sun's love and the sun is the mother's love <laughs> which okay okay it's not too different then if we continue looking through all right i, I don't think there's much insightful comments here so maybe i'll just move on but i really like this 
much better than the first one. So, yeah. Oh, and now with that, right, we're actually moving on into this new genre called the Seric Seven Character Ancient Verse. And you might notice that actually the first two lines only have five, have five characters. So if you look at the form, right, it actually does not state that it requires every line to be seven characters. It's just that the uh, majority of the lines are have seven characters. Uh. Yeah. Uh, so an irregular number of characters in the line. So really interesting. I don't think we've actually seen a form like this before. Everything else was always a rectangle, right? It's always like, uh, yeah, the same number of lines, same number of characters in every line. So pretty cool. As for the meter, not sure if we need to care about it because, I mean, it is important when composing. So maybe let's see if there are any notes on that. Okay, we to Zhong, special uh, defining characteristics. Okay, it's just saying it's kind of similar to um it does have some uh meter. Honestly, I, I'm not really tracking the discussion here. If someone else can understand it, please do put it in the comments. Uh yeah, I think gosh, I, I, I'm just so sleepy today. I don't know why. Okay, but this is a really famous poem. Um I think you probably would have heard of it if you're, uh, I don't know, of Asian descent, of Chinese descent. So this is by Chen Zi Ang. So not Chen Jiang, Chen Zi Ang. So two separate words here. And uh, it's Dong Yu Zhou Taige, on the gate tower at Yu Zhou. All right. 前不见古人, 后不见来者, 念天地之, Yo yo du chuang ran er ti xia. So, where before me are the ages that have gone, and where behind me are the coming generations? I think of heaven and earth without limit, without end, and I am all alone and my tears fall down. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so I think the you might be like, wow, what's what does this have to do with uh, the gate tower at Yojo? So I think the idea is that he sort of climbed up the tower and he's looking down from a height and he feels so, I guess, yeah, it's just everything seems so far away and looking from it from that perspective. And uh, yeah, it's just very... Uh, he feels very small uh, in the grand scheme of things. And also, I see that people have been uh, commenting. Sorry, I just saw. Uh, and yeah, so I, I hope you're still here. Try stayed uh, of mind. So hello. And uh, yeah, this is a very nice sentiment, right? That... Uh, that's uh, expressed in the previous poem. And you say, oh, you definitely feel this. Yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, right? Such a good poem, I think. Honestly, I think some of these lines are like, it's really like iconic. If you speak Chinese, like if you just say this, people will, will, even if they don't know the poem per se, they will like recognize it. Like, it's just like, if you don't, you might not have read Shakespeare, but then all the, figures of speech or exp expressions that he created, they, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll just, uh, but you will recognize it, right? Even if you don't know where it's from. So, yeah. I think, mm, it's very interesting 
that it's is really predicated the the m the main sense here is to see right so it's so i don't see okay this is not really in the english but in the chinese it says before me i do not see the ancients and behind me i do not see uh those who come so the the following generations are uh, yeah and it's only because of this uh this idea of seeing then from there then he moves on to thought right so when he thinks of the vastness of heaven and earth which is the universe and then he all alone he is all yeah all alone i feel i guess sad i guess he feels lonely and because of that then uh tears start to fall yeah so i don't know like do you have the moment where you you just see this uh amazing landscape and like you feel something like being moved within you i i think that's what he's trying to capture here uh. yeah it's very it's a very romantic kind of idea right in terms of the romantic as in like the 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 intellectual movement in what's the 18th 19th century well you know they have all these paintings of like some dude standing on a on a cliff looking down a waterfall is that kind of vibe uh, where the idea that nature it, it creates a sense of the sublime in yourself yeah or being in nature is a transformative experience and I, in this case it's not really nature because he's standing on a gate tower but i do think yeah i think it's a very relatable feeling uh like it's it's the sense that you feel the smallness that you feel but in um yeah yeah the smallness that you feel so i guess that's kind of it i i think this is pretty like there's not much to analyze here it's just really good <laughs> it's very direct to the point and just brilliant uh oh there's so few comments <laughs> this is funny it says the first two lines is like oh i don't see i don't see right i don't see the ancients before me i don't see the ones who come the ones who follow behind me then he's like oh there is two i don't sees good eye i don't know if is he trying to make a joke here like like you don't see anything uh. mm, okay a comment here says oh so his aloneness is due is because he does not see the past or future generations i think so oh i mean i think it's sort of also the idea that in the future he will be in the future he will be the past right i think it's this sense where he feels very insignificant in in time or he's worried that you know if i it's just like no matter what i do the people that follow won't see me as well so i, I see what you mean it's kind of it's kind of weird right because um uh, it's like, yeah, you don't see the past and future generations, but you still have like millions of people alive at the same time as you. But mm. so I think there's some sense of mm. I think there's some concern of legacy here. Yeah. And you say, uh, always amazing to see more insight in Chinese. Yeah, all right. So it's really, that's why poetry is more, I think, is more fun in the original language. Yeah.
definitely. Okay, let's see if there's a little more, any more comments here. Mm. This guy says, well, with 22 characters, you can make a ghost cry. <laughs> That's so funny. Eh? I don't think there's 22, though. 10. Eh? Wait, what? Why is this here? If it's really 22, then this is not a seven character ancient verse at all, right? It's like five, five, six, six. What? I'm confused. So what is the exact form of this? Okay, I don't think this is considered a a seven character ancient verse then. Interesting, but they just slotted it there for some reason. Yeah. But yeah, this is a great, great poem. So yeah, I'm glad we got to read it, even if it's not technically part of this genre. Mm, I think, yeah, maybe if there's no objections, I'll just move on to the next poem for now. So next is, all right, by who's this guy? Li Qi. All right, called Gu Yi and Old Air. You can see this pretty clear, right? So these are all lines with five characters, and then these are lines with seven characters. So I think this is a much better example of a seven character ancient verse. Okay, looks like it's another military poem. So let's go. Nan er shi chang zhong, shao xiao yu yan ke, du sheng ma ti xia, yu lai qing qi chi, sha ren mo gan qian, shi ru wei mao jie, wei mao zhe, huang yun, Long Di Bai Shui Fei Wei De Bao En Bu Neng Gui Liao Dong Xiao Fu Nian Shi Wu Guan Tan Pi Pa Jie Ge Wu Jing Wei Qiang Di Chu Se Yin Shi Wo San Jun Lei Ru Yu There once was a man sent on military missions, a wanderer from youth on the Yo and Yan frontiers. Under the horse's hooves, he would meet his foes and, re and recklessly risking his seven foot body, would slay whoever dared confront those mustaches that bristled like porcupine quills. There were dark clouds below the hills, there were white clouds above them. But before a man had served full time, how can he go back? In eastern Liao, a girl was waiting, a girl of 15 years, deaf with a guitar expert in dance and song. She seems to be fluting, even now, a reed song of home, filling every soldier's eyes with homesick tears. So, I think first thing I noticed, so this is new in any of the poems we read. I don't know if you could tell, like there's a distinct change of rhythm once we uh, went from the five character lines to the seven character lines. So, really interesting. Mm. I do wonder if there's a change in scene when that happens or why exactly they have this, they put the break there. But why don't we go line by line? Maybe, maybe it'll become clearer. So and again, so first thing, the topic is a, another military poem, right? We have uh, seen quite a lot of those before. And now let's see. So. There once was a man sent on military missions. Okay. A wanderer from youth on the Yu and Yan frontiers. Under the horse's hooves, he would meet his foes and recklessly risking his seven foot body. I don't think he's actually seven feet. Uh. This is a, is a Chinese, uh, Chinese chi. I wonder how tall that actually is. Yeah, it says. Seven shi is about the height of a normal person, a normal adult today. <laughs> yeah, so this guy's not a giant or anything. It's just a, just a normal guy. Okay. Well, he would be pretty tall by ancient standards, I guess. But 
it's not like a giant. Yeah. So, all right, next, uh, would slay whoever dared confront uh, those mustaches that bristle like porcupine quills. So I think these would be the, I guess, the Central Asian uh, forces, soldiers. All right. Okay. It seems like there is a pretty... Uh, so first is describing uh, sort of the, the one person, right? And when you get to the lines of seven, it says, uh, there were dark clouds below the hills. There were white clouds above them. But before a man has served full time, how can he go back? In Eastern Liao, a girl was waiting, a girl of 15 years. So this is probably his wife. Uh, yeah. So as you know, people got married much earlier back then. So, And then next, death of a guitar expert in dance and song. This suggests to me that he's actually, I mean, imagine she's not a peasant, right? Like a, like a peasant girl doesn't have the money to practice. Okay. And it's not, okay. Yeah. I, it's not really a guitar. It's like a pipa, but it's kind of like, it's like a Chinese guitar. I think they both came from Central Asia anyway. Right. Let's see. I mean, the guitar came from Spain, which came from the uh, Muslims, right? So maybe they have a similar origin. Quite like, because the pipa also came, is actually a Central Asian instrument originally. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. So it's funny, right? You're like, okay, we got to fight off these Central Asian invaders and then you're playing their instruments. But yeah. Okay. But yeah, this this is not a poor girl. So if this is his wife, then I guess this guy must be pretty rich, maybe pretty high ranking as well. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, she seems to be fluting, even now, a reed song of home, filling every soldier's eyes with homesick tears. I don't really understand the though this E or is Eastern Liao the border? I wonder. So maybe it's not his wife. It's actually like a just a performer who's there. I don't really understand why. Mm, but if all the soldiers can hear it, I guess it's just some random girl who was there. <laughs> then maybe, maybe then she's not rich. If she's a professional performer. Hmm, interesting. Oh, and the comment says, yes, many string instruments originate from the Middle East. Yeah, I. that makes sense, right? So, oh, so maybe that would explain why, because they're at the border. That's why there's someone who can play the, the instrument. That makes sense. Okay. So then uh, next, so she is playing it, and it causes just everyone wants to, well, it doesn't actually say homesick here. It just says it causes our three armies, maybe three battalions, I don't know, to uh, cry tears like rain. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Let's look at interpretation of this. Mm. Hmm. Oh, actually there's not much. Just this is really good. 
I think it's kind of I don't know. I, I don't really get what what's with the what's with the random girl who appears. Uh, I I don't really see why where that comes from, or what it's doing in this poem. Uh, yeah. There's one point where here where they said like you have the girl to. Or, or because the originally, or this interpretation is that originally the poem wanted to depict the boy crying, but the poet doesn't do that, but instead uh, depicts all the soldiers crying. I, I guess you could do that, but what, why, what's with this girl? Okay, maybe another reading is that what actually happened in real life is like this girl came, everyone cried, and this inspired the poet to write this whole poem. So maybe that's why the girl is there. Yeah. Okay, I think I think that's possible. And then so every person in these three battalions are is a boy like this, right? Because, I mean, it's kind of an average boy. Average. Average person, yeah. So, okay. That, that's my... That's my quick take on this. Uh, maybe I'll just move on to the next poem. Hope it doesn't feel like moving too fast, but... Okay, okay, I think it's a decent speed. We went through like three or four so far. So far. And yeah, it, the, the poems are getting longer and longer, which is why I'm trying to leave some time for the longer ones. All right, so this next one by, what's his name? Li Qi. A farewell to my friend Cheng, Chen Zhangfu. So Song Chen Zhangfu. Si ri nan feng da mai huang. Zhao花未落,同夜长, Who 闻到古林相识多,罢关昨日今如何? In the fourth month, the south wind blows plains of yellow barley. Date flowers have not faded yet, and laka leaves are long. The green peak that we left at dawn, we still can see at evening, while our horses whinny on the road, eager to turn homeward. Chen, my friend, you have always been a great and good man. With your dragon's mustache, tiger's eyebrows, and your massive forehead. <laughs> In your bosom, you have shelved away 10,000 volumes. You have held your head high, never bowed it in the dust, after buying us wine and pledging us here at the eastern gate. And taking things as lightly as a wild goose feather, flat you lie, tipsy, forgetting the white sun. But now and then you open your eyes and gaze at the high lone cloud. The tide hid of the lone river joins the darkening sky. The ferryman beaches his boat. It has grown too late to sail. And people on their way from Cheng cannot go home. And people from Luoyang sign with disappointment. I have heard about the many friends around your woodland dwelling. Yesterday you were dismissed. Are they your friends today? Oof. Oof, that's rough, man. Oh, so the massive forehead is really funny. <laughs> What's this? 
求虚，求虚虎眉，人大丧。<笑> I'm guessing the connection is like, oh no no, I was gonna say big forehead and big brain because he remembers all the ten thousand volumes. But actually, literally here it says is in your in your belly, you have it. So. So he's just saying this guy is ha very hairy, has a huge forehead, and is fat. <laughs> I, this is like a roast, just roasting his friend, man. <laughs> uh, all right, but okay. I think the first thing that caught my eye is. Hmm. Here, right. Last one. I have heard about the many friends around your woodland dwelling. Yesterday you were dismissed. Are they your friend today? Friend? Are they your friends today? So it seems like seem he is leaving. This Chen guy is leaving because of some sort of political issue, because he had lost his job, and. Yeah, you see, there's also this line: "You have held your head high, never bowed it in the dust." Where it seems that he got fired for holding on to his um, political values, right? You, you're unwilling in Chinese. You are unwilling to lower your head into the, um, I don't know, the wild grass. Yeah. So, hmm. Why don't we look at the context for this? Um, Chen Fuzhang. Okay, they they don't have much context about why he. Stop being an official. Hmm. I don't know. It seems like he was retrenched. He was fired. I can't tell. There's this other reading, which is that um, instead of you have held your head high, never bowed it in the dust. There's another reading which says um. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I think the other reading doesn't work. So, I think this one is pretty good. Mm, it's just, yeah, it's about holding on to your values. Ah,、uh. yeah. And okay, so, so let's just briefly go through the arc of this. So first is the setting the scene, right? There's the all the various plans. And they're sort of traveling together from the mountain, and、uh, yeah, on on the horseback they're traveling, and he says, he says to his friend, right? He's like, "Wow, you're, you know, you're, you have always been a great and good man. You look disgusting." <laughs> no, no, I mean these these are complimentary, right? It's like you look very distinguished. Yeah, you look very distinguished. You know, you are. A man of values, you have never compromised them, and uh, uh, um, yeah, and hmm, okay. So it looks like then now they're like sort of drinking together at the eastern gate, and sort of just chilling, and yeah, you know, he's sort of like lying down, drunk, and forgetting the. Yeah, just forgetting the time, for I guess one last time, you know. And then,、uh, next, he looks at the sky. Oh wow! Because he's lying down, right? He looks at the sky, and you see that. Oh wow! Actually, the time is growing too late. The ferryman is already come back, and people, you know. People who need want to go on the boat, they can't really do it anymore. 
And hmm. I'm not sure what this last two lines are doing. Are they saying now we need a place to stay? Should we go find them? Hmm. Hmm, okay. Oh, here's another interesting interpretation. Uh, so this, in the English, it's saying like, okay, it's because there's no boats. The boat's not sailing anymore for the day. That's why people are sort of unable to go on it. But then there's this one which says that, oh, actually, the person from Zheng, which is um actually this Chen fellow, this Chen, what's his name? Chen Zhang Fu. So it's saying that, okay, you are the uh, wanderer from Zheng who is unable to arrive at home. And then the poet, I am the, uh, I guess also the traveler from Luoyang who, uh, Size of disappointment. So I, I think I would like this reading more because then I think it ties better to the last two lines where it's sort of reflecting on the situation. Yeah. I, I, I think I like this more. So, okay. So there, there's no more uh, boats for the day. I guess they do have to find a place to stay. But then that sort of transitions the thought to you're not going to be able to arrive home. And then I feel kind of sad. And he starts reflecting on the situation like, oh, you know, I heard that you have a lot of friends there at your home, but then are they still your friends today? Now that you've lost your job. I would really want more context for this. It's a shame this page doesn't give us that. But because it seems like the whole point, the, the strength of the last two lines depends on the circumstances of him losing his job. So hmm, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I understand this very well. But uh, yeah. It's 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 pretty good. Yeah. It, it just feels very, it feels very specific. So without I'm having some trouble getting the vibe because I don't have the specific details, but it is a good poem, uh, so yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, having, just sneezing for a bit. Why don't we look at the comments and then we can move on to the next few poems. Uh, Okay, they're praising the first few lines as well. So, in the fourth month, the south wind blows plains of yellow barley. Date flowers have not faded yet, and laka leaves are long. The green peak that we left at dawn, we still can see at evening, while our horses whinny on the road, eager to turn homeward. So, the four lines here are. We see the first two lines are so more difficult to get, I think, whereas the next two lines are kind of clear. Okay. I don't really get that, uh, the significance of this <laughs> criticism, but uh, I'll see, I, I don't, okay. 
nothing super useful that I spot here. So maybe people were just as confused as I am. All right, so why don't we move to the next one? Um, so this one by Li Qi again, a lute song. All right, let me just drink some water first. We're almost oh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're halfway through. So five more poems for the day. Yeah. So the poems now are all going to be rather long, I think. Oh, this is long. Okay, this one. Yeah, I wonder. I feel like I'm not doing the long poems a lot of... I'm not reading into them as deeply. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it, but I'm just like... In some ways, long poems are easier to read because they make it more explicit, right? So... All right, let's go to the second half of the day. Have uh, Li Qi, a lute song, Qing Ge. So, 主人有酒,欢金期,请奏明情,广林客,热照成头,鸟半飞, or is this Wu? Oh, sorry, Wu Banfei, Shuang Qi Wan Shu, Feng Ru Yu, Feng Ru Yi. Tong Lu Tong Lu Hua Zhu Zhu Zeng Hui Chu Tan Lu Shui Ho Chu Fei Yi Shong Yi Dong Wu Jie Jing Si Zuo Wu Yan Xin Yu Xi Qing Shui Zhou Shi Qian Yu Li Gan Gao Yun Shan Tong Tsi Shi Our host providing abundant wine to make the night mellow Asked his guest from Yangzhou to play for us on the lute. Toward the moon that whitens the city wall, black crows are flying. Frost is on 10,000 trees, and the wind blowing through our clothes, but a copper stove has added its light to that of flowery candles, and the lute plays the green water, and then the queen of Chu. Once it has begun to play, there is no other sound. A spell is on the banquet, while the stars grow thin. But 300 miles from here, in Huai, official duties await him, and so it's farewell, and the road again, under cloudy mountains. Okay, so it's like a... So they're, they're staying the night at somewhere. So, okay, our host, and then so they're staying the night at somewhere, right? And then they're drinking, and there's a guest from Yangzhou to playing on the lute. That's why it's called a lute song. And then uh, toward the moon that whitens the city wall, let crows are. I guess it's the, so it's describing the what's happens when the lute is playing. Okay, so it's for, uh, toward the moon that brightens the city wall, black crows are flying. Frost is on 10,000 trees and the wind blows through our clothes. But a copper stove has added its light to that of flowery candles. What? And the loop plays the green water and then the queen of Chu. Okay. Maybe it's worth checking what these songs are. Once it has begun to play, there is no other sound. A spell is on the banquet or the stars grow thin. Oh. Okay. But then the the loot player has to leave soon, so then the story ends. Okay. Uh, I'm not really getting this. Not really sure why. I don't know. I I don't think it actually describes the effect of the song that much 
right? It just says it plays the two songs, and then when it plays, it's like, like everything is listened to it, right? And even the stars are listening to it. Is it? Are the stars listening to it? What does it mean by the stars grow thin? Or is it like you're, you you don't even see what's going on outside? Hmm. Okay, okay. That makes sense to me. I think maybe the first part is like, so before the the description of the songs, it's kind of describing all the like you're describing that's cold and there's wind and then there's all these like like light in very spare there's like candles and there's a stove but when the song starts to play you just focus on the music and all of that just like fades away i think that's the effect it's trying to have yeah so yeah so at first my confusion is like why talk about all these other things before the song plays but i guess the point is to have a contrast where all these things just uh yeah yeah it just becomes uh it's not even that there's no other sound right it's like there's no other sense <laughs> except for the music or yeah but i feel like if you really want to do it I feel like he could have spent more lines describing the state of listening to the music. I think it's very strange that he sort of skips over it so quickly. It's just like, okay, it plays these two songs. I mean, you spend three lines on the playing and the effect. But before that, you already spent three lines like describing random stuff around that's happening. And then also two lines on like the setting and then two lines on like what the guy's going to do. So even though this is about the lute playing, you know, you have three lines and then one line is just like the name of the songs. So really there's only just two lines on the effect of the music, which I feel is very strange. Like, Yeah, like even if the you want to convey it's the sense of stillness, I'm sure you could have more lines of that. It's so weird that it, it just skips through it so quickly. Which is why I, I don't I don't really like it. Eh? Maybe I, I don't get it, but it feels very Yeah man. What the not Okay, let's see what other people say. Okay, <laughs> apparently nobody else liked it too because <laughs> there are no famous critics praising it. <laughs> yeah, I, I this doesn't work for me. This doesn't work for me. There are some good lines, for sure, but just... I think overall the, the construction seems very strange. Yeah. I, I can see where it's saying like when there's one say there's no other sound. That's why you're like, okay, I'm not gonna say anything, right? I'm just gonna skip that part. Or or it's paradoxical to have a lot of lines about having no other sound. But I think that. Maybe it will work better if it's like a film, right? You can be like, there's no other sound, but at least you could. I, I think for the poetic effect work, you need us to really stay in that state. So if we end it with like, once it has begun, like if it ends like, if this is the final line, once it has begun to play, there's no other sound. And then the poem ends. I think that could work because then we're sort of, sort of sitting in the moment and feeling that. But if you follow it directly on next line with like, okay, this guy got a, he has to go back to work. It's like, I don't think there's, he's giving us the time to really sit in this moment, which is why I, I don't think it's a very good poem. Yeah. 
Wow, look at me, poetry critic. <laughs> I mean, I might be completely off, uh, but it's just... Yeah, it really doesn't work for me. Eh? Slightly quite disappointed by this, actually. But yeah. Okay, wow, this is a... Looks like the longest part of this poem is the title, but let's give this a try. Actually, I wanted to check. What's with those? Okay, okay, so this part is intentional. I thought this might be like a error or a note or something. So, oh, but this is really interesting. I think, I mean, we're going to see a lot of changes in rhythm here because of the different line lengths. So I'm quite curious what the effect will be. So if you're, okay, I'll try to recite it more uh, without too many pauses and try to accentuate the, the rhythm part. So yeah, do try to listen out for that. I think that'll be pretty interesting. Well, first I need to figure out how do you even read this title, man? Uh, so it's by Li Qi again. So, 听懂大谈胡加生间寄语弄房给事而急事. So, on hearing Dong play the flageolet, a poem to palace attendant Fang. All right, okay. 菜女洗澡胡家生通神明鸟翼霸其名飞木木野路悠悠走堂下长安成连东耶人凤凰池队青锁门高才托略明与力日夕望君报情志 Damn, that was really long. <laughs> I feel like Honestly, the most exciting parts are when like the meter changes, where you have like the this short three word parts and then these five parts, five five character parts. So if we ever manage to do like the song, get to the song dynasty there, the genre called song ci is really good on this because there are, the line lengths are quite uneven. I think the the rhythmic effect is really, really quite cool. Yeah, personally, uh, maybe it's just because this poem is super long. So I just like the part where there was some variety with the uh, rhythm. Uh, yeah. Okay, now for the English. When this melody for the flageolet was made by Lady Tsai, when long ago, one by one, she sang its 18 stanzas, even the Tartars were shedding tears into the border grasses, and the envoy of China was heartbroken, turning back home with his consort. Cold fires now of old battles are grey on ancient forts, and the wilderness is shadowed with white, new flying snow. When the player first brushes the shang string, and the zhue, and then the ru, autumn leaves in all four quarters are shaken with a murmur. Dong, 
Dong, the master, must have been taught in heaven. Demons come from the deep pine wood and stealthily listen to music slow, then quick, following his hand. Now far away, now near again, according to his heart. A hundred birds from an empty mountain scatter and return. Three thousand miles of floating clouds darken and lighten. A wild goose fledgling left behind cries for its flock, and a, and a tartar child for the mother he loves. Then river waves are calmed, and birds are mute that were singing. And, uh, what is this, Uzu? Yeah, anyway, Uzu tribes are homesick for the distant land. And out of the dust of Siberian steppes rises a plaintive sorrow. Suddenly the low sound leaps to a freer tune. Like a long wind swaying a forest, a downpour breaking tiles, a cascade through the air flying over through treetops. A wild deer calls to his fellows. He is running among the mansions in the corner of the capital by the eastern palace wall. Phoenix Lake lies opposite the gate of green jade. But how can fame and profit concern a man of genius? Day and night I long for him to bring his loot again. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, so it's about this guy, right? This Dong Da. Okay. So it's about hearing this dong, but what? And I guess, but he's writing the poem to someone else. What? Ah, uh, okay, okay. So the story is that there's this dude called Dong Da, and he played this tune, Hu Jia Long. Uh, so this she played this song, and then the poet is very impressed, right? And then she wrote this, and then in order to send it to his friend, uh, palace attendant Fang, uh, so that I guess Fang will know that he heard a great song. <laughs> okay. So the song, so when the melody for the flagellet is the uh Hu Jia here, right? The Hu Jia Long. So all right, so when this melody for the flagellet was made by Lady Tai. Okay. So this is a very old song, I guess. Long ago she sang us 18 stanzas. And then what? Okay, so this this is the historical context of the song. I don't know where it's from though. Okay, so this is during the Han Dynasty. So the apparently the Lady Tai was uh I think she was a princess who was um I guess was married to one of the Central Asian tribes for political purposes. Uh. So I think, I think. So I don't think she was having a good time. But eventually the by the end the the Emperor Cao Cao managed to bring her back. Oh, actually she was not married i think she was actually abducted by one of the the kings dang okay so that's the context of that wow a uh, big story for this song actually all right and then next right so the next one was shang zhe and yu i think these are the different strings so they're like C, C sharp, you know, the, the different notes. I mean, there's only, there's, I think it's a pentatonic scale. So it'll be like, okay, I don't, I don't know <laughs> the notes actually, but, but yeah, there, there are five notes in Chinese music. Uh. There's a shang and then the big, big ones are like shang and the gong, right? Okay, shang, zhe, and yu. So yeah, these are part of the five tones. Okay. So the five tones are Gong Shang Jue Wei Yu. 
So these are names of the five notes in the pentatonic scale. Uh, I don't really know what they correspond to, to in modern music. Uh. I think one of them is C sharp. So, okay, that's not super helpful. <laughs> right, but basically, the I, I guessing this is the first few notes of the melody. So he starts to play, right? And then like, whoa, then all the... Damn, like, whoa, all the... All the trees are shaking. <laughs> okay, and yeah, so this the, the music player, Dong, so wow, must have been taught in heaven. Okay. And what see even demons come to listen to music slow. And then uh okay, so the it comes to listen. So the music goes slow and then fast, it changes the rhythm, which is also what he's doing here, right? The, the poet is also changing the rhythm here. So I think he picked a good form. He picked a good poetic form to do this with. Okay. And now far away, now near again, according to his heart. So this is the way he's playing. And then the effect is that, I don't know, birds are like going wild. Clouds are changing. And what the heck? Huh? So like a baby bird is cries. <laughs> like children are crying. What? What? So you're saying this song makes babies cry. Is this a compliment or what? Um okay, I guess it's very moving, that's why. And the river waves are calmed. And birds are mute that were singing. And you know, Muzu tribes are homesick. And so it's like the whole world is responding to this song. It was very melodramatic, but you know, I'll, I'll give you it, it's it. I mean, you're describing how you feel, right? So I guess you feel like the world is also responding to this great song. So, you know, I I do feel like he's He's not insane. He's trying to share how his emotional state are. Right. Okay. Then now uh the, the sound leaps to a freer tune. And then it's like a long wind swing of forest, a downpour breaking tiles. Okay, it's like all these things. And then what's with the stuff about Eastern Palace walls? Let's look at that. Okay, okay, so these are all uh, things that were in the Han Dynasty, the Gate of Green Jade. Mm, okay, so the deer is running, but th so he, even though the Gate of Green Jade, this Qing Suomen, is a gate in the Han Dynasty, so it's before the poet's time, there was one interpretation saying that this is actually, so this is just another way to refer to the Palace Gate of the Tang Dynasty of his own time. Uh. So, but the you remember the allusion to the Han is because the tune was composed in the Han Dynasty. So, okay, so the deer is sort of like the deer who's in the palace is just running. Okay. So it makes animals run away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And then finally, but how can fame and profit concern a man of genius? Day and night, I long for him to bring his loot again. Okay, I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I keep making fun of this guy, but this is obvious. I think this is a much better poem than the previous one, uh, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, this is because it's by the same guy, right? Li Qi and uh, the other one. Oops. I hope I didn't uh, Li Qi here as well. So that, but I think this is a much better, I mean, it's a bit overblown, but I think it is pretty good. It's a much better way of showing the effect of the, of a piece of music. Oh. Yeah.
I mean, this guy is like a groupie. He reminds me of like, you know, like when the Beatles were playing on stage and all the girls were just screaming. Like, this is the same vibe. It's like, you know, day and night, I long for him to bring his loot again. <laughs> He's just a fanboy. Mm, you see, here people have comments because it's a better poem than the earlier one. Mm. Okay, they're just saying it's really good. Ah, I like this point. So suddenly he inserts the short lines. So exactly. So the poem also has that subtlety or that one that effect where the the lute is changing its sound it's changing the melody right or the rhythm so that's that i like that because that's what he's trying to describe but he it also happens in the poem itself so yeah i do think this guy's a bit cringe like Really? So this guy, so so a person plays the lute and like the world is shaking. <laughs> I don't know, man. She was a bit over of an overreaction, I guess, but okay. Obviously, I mean, it's a great song, I bet, but did you really have to write like, has to be like, 200 characters. <laughs> I know. I feel he's kind of cringe. Like, look at this, man. Look at this. Crazy. Okay. But anyway. Oh, you said, yeah, fanboy. Exactly. Right, right. It's, it's not just me, right? <laughs> yeah, I think this is... Well, okay, I'm. It's not the worst in the world. Like, it's definitely a step up from his previous poem. So, I'll give him that. No way! It's another poem about listening to music. Okay, how many more are there? Okay, okay. So this is the last one, by this guy. I hope. So it's on hearing, An Wan Shan play the reed pipe. Okay, let's see. I, I hope it, I hope it's not so cringy. Alright. Ting an wan shan chui bi li ge. Alright, so let's start. Nan shan jie zhu wei bi li ci rue ben zi gui zi chu liu chuan han di you zhuan qi. Liangzhou 就龙宁虎啸一时发万籁百泉相与秋突然更作于阳千黄云萧条白日岸变调如闻杨柳春上林繁花照眼心岁月岁月高堂列明珠Okay, I'll read it first. Read the Eng I'll read the English first before giving my comments. I don't really like it. Spoiler. Um, all right. Bamboo from the southern hills was used to make this pipe, and its music that was introduced from Persia, first of all, has taken on new magic through later use in China. And now the Tartar from Liangzhou blowing it for me, drawing a sigh from whosoever hears it, is bringing to a wondrous eye homesick tears. Many like to listen, but few understand. To and fro at will, there's a long wind flying 
dry mulberry trees, old cypresses trembling in its chill. There are nine baby phoenixes out crying each other. A dragon and a tiger spring up at the same moment. Then in a hundred waterfalls, 10,000 songs of autumn are suddenly changing to the Yuyang lament. And when uh, yellow clouds grow thin and the white sun darkens, they are changing still again to spring in the willow trees. Like imperial gardens, flowers brightening the eye with beauty are the high hall candles we have lighted this cold night. And with every cup of wine goes another round of music. So one thing I noticed is that this guy uses the same like things all the time, right? Like remember when he's saying his friend he has a uh his dragon mustache and a tiger brow. And then there's like a has there's a phoenix, right, in the previous poem. Oh, okay, no. Uh I'm pretty sure there was a phoenix and then there was a young bird and uh yeah yeah phoenix here and this guy he, he's just using the same things it's like and he even have the the sound of the wind i'm pretty sure it was here as well right the so so i don't know i just find this guy like he's just saying the same things all the time about the same things as like so I, I don't really like him. Am I just too critical? But I feel like he's not saying something new. Like he's just repeating himself, you know? All right, so you see there's the phoenixes again, and then they're like a uh, dragon and a tiger, and, uh, you know, crying from music, the wind, like... Is that you read one, you read basically all of them. Like, yeah, the music is nice, sure, but please. I guess the beauty of the music is not translating to the beauty of this poem. <laughs> I'm so critical, uh, but it's just, uh, I don't like this guy. So cringy. Hmm. And famous comments. Nothing much. Yeah, I, I, I don't like this. I, I don't know. Is it bad? I, I don't really want to analyze it. Because he's just saying the same thing as before. Okay, okay, I'll give it one pass, one quick pass, and then we'll move to the next one. So, okay, I do find the first part interesting, where it says, um, sort of, uh, tells, it's like the bamboo is from, like the, the bamboo of the, is this the flute? The reed pipe is from one place, and the music itself is from another place. So that's interesting. Uh, but um, and the person himself, the music player, is from another place, so I think that's cool. But everything else is just like, wow, music good. <laughs> like, yeah, I I know. Yeah, that's. Yeah, you've written three poems on this, bro. Like. <laughs> You know what? Let's just move on. Yeah. Okay, if any of you really like the poem and want me to do it, read it more deeply, please just comment. Uh for now I'm I, I really this guy's just cringe, man. Yeah. But maybe I maybe I will change my mind. So if you want me to, I'm happy to go back again. Okay, so this is the second last poem. But so this is by a famous guy, Meng Hao Ren. So it's about returning uh at night to Lu Men Mountain. Ye Gui Lu Men Shan Ge. Oh yeah, kind of 
kind of excited for this. I mean, I hope it's better than the last few. So let's go. Shan Si Zhong Ming, Zhou Yi Hun, Yu Liang Du Tou, Zheng Du Xuan, Ren Sui Sha Lu, Xiang Jiang Cun, Yu Yi Chong Zhou, Gui Lu Men, Lu Men Yue Zhao, Kai Yan Shu, Tu Dao Long Gong, Qi Yin Chu, Yan Fei Song Jing, Chang Ji Liao. A bell in the mountain temple sounds the coming of night. I hear people at the fishing town stumble aboard the ferry, while others follow the sandbank to their homes along the river. I also take a boat and am bound for Lumen Mountain, and soon the Lumen moonlight is piercing misty trees. I have come, before I know it, upon an ancient hermitage, the thatched door, the piney path, the solitude, the quiet. Where a hermit lives and moves, never needing a companion. Interesting. Okay. So it starts with a bell about the coming of night. So I think, at least in these temples, they will have bells for like, uh, you know, in the morning, in the evening, or that just at fixed timings. So it makes sense to me. All right. Next. Uh, okay, so it starts with this hearing, right? And then next, he also hears people at the fishing town stumble aboard the ferry, while others follow the sandbank to their homes along the river. So these are people going home, and then he's also taking a boat, and he's going to Lumen Mountain. He's returning to Lumen Mountain, in fact. And soon, the Lumen moonlight is piercing misty trees. I have come upon before I know it upon a ancient hermitage. I'm a bit confused because it says it's returning to Lumen Mountain, but it doesn't seem like it says house, right? So the the thatch door, the piney path, the solitude, the quiet, where a hermit lives and moves, never leading a companion. I think it's interesting that he started with the mountain temple and now he's going to something similar, a hermitage. But I'm not really sure what Lumen is doing here. Like, it's not his house, right? Okay. No way. It is his house. Is it? No, 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 no. Eh? Is it? Okay, okay. No, no. Is is this guy called Peng Gong? So he's. I guess it's his friend. Okay, okay. So it's not any old ancient hermitage. It is the, so the dwelling of this guy called Pang Gong, rather Pang Gong. Uh, so also called Pang De Gong. So he refused to. So he was offered the official position, but he refused it, and then he went to Lu Men, Lu Men Mountain, to, uh, yeah, just live in the solitude. But this is not him, right? I guess he's visiting his. No, no, no. This is okay. This is not a contemporary. Yes, this is actually a someone from very long ago. So this is from the Han Dynasty, right? The Dong Han. Uh, so the Eastern Han Dynasty. So this is before, uh, before his own time by quite a bit. So. Okay, so he is coming across an ancient hermitage, but is a specific person's one. Is a historical characters. I mean, he's, he's yeah, a historical figure. Yeah. Okay, so then I guess imagine if you go to 
what's the equivalent for us? Like if we went to uh, who's I like a celebrity's house, I guess. I don't know, go to Elvis. You you go to Elvis's mansion. Was it called Graceland? Yeah, if you go to Grace Graceland. He's a hermit, right? He lives alone. Yeah. Okay, and then so uh yeah, so he went there and then he's just looking at the place. I think the here there's another reading which is that when he says when he says when the, where a hermit lives and moves, when he says that is actually referring to himself. So where there is uh, I, a hermit who comes and goes on his own. Or where I, the hermit, come and go on my own. Mm. Hmm. Feel like there is something going on here, but yeah. It's just, hmm. Can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, he said the suspense better than any soap opera. <laughs> uh. Hmm. I really wonder uh, what's going on. Why is he returning? I don't understand that part. Okay. So he at, at age forty, this the poet, right? He was in the capital, and then he didn't do very well. So then he traveled for a bit, and then he went back home, and then he wanted to. He deliberately wanted to, uh, copy this historical character, this Pang De Gong, which is why, uh, he set up a a lodging like just a i guess a hut or, or a house at the lumen mountain and occasionally he lives there so okay so that's why so he's going to one of his yeah one of his houses and and then he comes across the house of his role model, this guy that he did, that he's set up the house deliberately because of this guy, right? Because this guy was uh, a hermit there as well. So yeah, okay, that's really interesting. Mm. So it's like if you're an Elvis impersonator, and then you buy a house next to Elvis's old house. <laughs> okay, terrible analogy, but uh oh interesting. Okay. Hmm. Let's look at some comments. Maybe it'll help me make sense of this. Wow. I don't know. I really feel like this this is a very good poem, but I can't quite get it. The comments were not that helpful. Maybe it's this idea of, or in, in religious studies, there's this idea where like this is it, this idea of like sacred repetition where you know doing things that others have done in the past has some sense of there's just this magical quality to it ah. 
So maybe that, that's the sense being conveyed here, where he comes across this historical figure that he really admires, that he's consciously trying to copy, and he's just... Yeah, it's just that that sense of magic or or the sense of being a part of something greater, even if, but I right ironically by being alone, he has a community of loners in history. So, I think that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Right, so the last line is like, there is only the hermit who comes and goes by himself. But even as he says that, you know, he he has this. It's not really just him, right? It, it's a lot of other hermits, and this, in this specific case, there is his role model of Pang Gong. So, I guess if I had to, I think there is a sense of paradox in the final line, oh, when he emphasizes the solitude that is not really solitude. Yeah. So, yeah, so okay, that, that's my, my hot take on this. Mm, okay, so there's a question here. Uh, you ask, uh, speaking of Graceland, what's your thought on the, as in Dao De, translated as grace? I don't think that would be a very good... I can see where it's coming from, but I think the is a kind of... Um, it's, it's almost like this magic power. Uh, or the idea is that you, you have, through virtuous cultivation, you have this sort of power, like this maybe some charisma that is able to change the world around you. Uh. It, it, okay, it doesn't really have to be magic. It can be just like, you know, people respect you so much or you're just so good with people that, that things just work out. But it is so I, but it is a kind of so I think maybe it's something closer to like virtue, charisma kind of thing than grace. Because I guess when you say grace it's more like um, elegance. That's the at least that's how I associate it with. Yeah. So those are some quick thoughts. Yeah. Oh, oh you said the Christian idea of grace. Oh, actually, I, I, I'm not very familiar with that. So interesting. Okay. Let me, maybe let me just Google that because I don't know too much about that. Christian grace. Okay. No, not, not, not this. Definition. Ah, uh, it's a spontaneous, a merited gift of the divine favor in the salvation of sinners and the divine influence operating in individuals. Okay, I think the second one definitely could work then. Right? It's the divine in the individual that makes them sacred, right? Okay, I can definitely see that. And I guess you could say it's sort of just as how the the or how grace originates from God, then the the originates from the Tao, the way. Okay, then I guess there is a pretty good analogy here. I don't think the Tao would be characterized or or God here it seems like there's there's a willing, right? God's God wants to give you that. But I think the Tao is not so personified. Though. It's sort of like, it's like a natural law. It's like the laws of physics. So, uh, in some sense, I guess the Tao is like, it's like you use the law of physics to get what you want. It, it's, does that make sense? It's almost like, I, it, it feels more like you're building a machine than like, it can be a ma like a machine that can do like really cool things, but it's not like a personal relationship with God or a... yeah. So maybe that will help. 
Mm. Okay. So. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. You say, having the grace of God, you must be virtuous. The new modern idea of grace is elegance. So especially, it's the same idea. Tao is God. Mm. Interesting. Well, I don't, so, hmm, I think, yeah, I can definitely see the analogy. Uh, so, really interesting. I, hmm. Yeah, maybe we should read the Tao Te Ching together next time. That would be pretty cool. Huh? Well, the thing is, if you read that, like, it's so short, but you can talk about it forever. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for raising this. That's really interesting. Mm. Yeah, I, I do want to... I would like to think more about the... I think it's one of the things that somehow doesn't really come up in my studies. Like I see Tao all the time. Uh, Ren, like benevolence, happens a lot. But yeah. And one more comment is when you have the grace of God, you are naturally elegant. Oh, interesting. Wow. That's pretty cool. Huh? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just finish uh, the last poem. I got might have something in a bit. Getting some text. Uh, okay. So, all right. This final poem, a by Li Bai, a famous, famous, famous poet. All right. Uh, a song of Lu Mountain. A song of Lu Lu Mountain to censor. Uh, who's this? Lu Shuzhou. I don't really have the name here, like A Lu Shuzhou, right? Or Lu Shan Yao Ji Lu Dai Yu Shuzhou, right? Pretty long poem, so let's go. I am the Huang Ren, Feng Ge Xiao Kong Qiu. 手持绿日杖，招别黄鹤楼。五日寻仙不辞远，一声号入名山游。庐山秀出南斗旁，屏风九叠云紧张。影落明湖清带光，金缺前开二峰长。银河倒挂三十梁。香炉瀑布遥相望，回崖呃踏丈林苍苍，翠影红霞仰朝日，鸟飞不到无天长。登高壮观天地间，大江茫茫去不黄，黄云万里动风色，白波九道流雪山，好味驴山。好为庐山摇，雨哎，心因庐山发，闲亏石径侵我心。谢公行处苍苔，别莫早拂还舟无事情。情心三叠到出城，遥见仙人彩云里，手把芙蓉朝日经。先期汉慢酒，该上任皆卢敖，犹太清。So this is a note. So of an alternative reading. So let's do the English first. I am the madman of the true country, who sang a mad song disputing Confucius, holding in my hand a staff of green jade. I have crossed since morning at a yellow crane terrace. All five holy mountains, without a thought of distance, according to the one constant habit of my life. Lu Mountain stands beside the Southern Dipper, in clouds reaching silken like a nine-paneled screen, with its shadows in a crystal lake deepening the green water. The Golden Gate opens in the two mountain ranges, 
a silver stream is hanging down to three stone bridges within sight of the mighty tripod falls. Ledges of cliff and winding trails leads to blue sky and a flash of cloud in the morning sun, whence no flight of bird could be blown into Wu. I climb to the top. I survey the whole world. I see the long river that runs beyond return. Yellow clouds that winds have driven hundreds of miles, and a snow peak widely circled by the swirl of a ninefold stream. And so I am singing a song of Lu Mountain, a song that is born of the breath of Lu Mountain, where the stone mirror makes the heart's purity purer, and green moss has buried the footsteps of Xie. I have eaten the immortal palate and rid of the world's troubles before the lute's third playing have achieved my element. Far away, I watch the angels riding colored clouds toward heaven's jade city with hibiscus in their hands. And so, when I have traversed the nine sections of the world, I follow Saint. I will follow Saint Luau up the great purity. What? <laughs> what? What? Uh... Um. Okay, so this first is about where the author is and then the sites of Lu Shan and then in the end it says his desire to retreat from the world okay so um okay, no. but right from the start we have this illu illusion right I am the madman of true country who sang a mad song disputing Confucius so apparently, I can't remember where the story is from, but uh, apparently there's this madman of Chu, which is a southern state. What? That is not uh, the right person. But uh, yeah, there's this madman of Chu and uh, who uh, called when Chu, when Confucius visited, then the this Lu Tong said, uh, was advising him not to become an official. Yeah, and instead, so I think this one, the Madman of True, is actually a, a let me think. Ah, uh, Lu Tong. Okay, let's see. Ah, Chu Guo Yin Shi, right? The Hermit of True. Not sure where he's from. Uh, okay, it is from the Analex. So he's just pretending to be crazy in order to avoid the uh, dangers of um, political life. Okay, so he says, I am the madman of Chu who sang a mad song disputing Confucius. So he's trying to say he's also like that, right? He's avoiding, he's being a hermit. He is being a hermit, avoiding the political life for, because politics is dirty. That's the idea. Okay, so and he says, okay, so now I have crossed all five holy mountains. So there are five uh holy mountains uh in China. So he has apparently visited all of them. And then uh according to the one constant habit of his life, I'm not sure what that habit is actually. I don't think he says it. Eh? Oh, okay, okay. So it actually says so the habit, it actually literally says here, it's just all my life, I like to visit famous mountains. So, <laughs> okay. And so Lu Mountain stands next to the Southern Dipper. Okay. So just describing the mountain uh, in the, the so Southern Dipper is a star in the sky. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's but obviously, mountains are not a star, so it's not in the sky. But it's trying to say that it's so tall that it's like it's right next to 
the start, right? Okay, and that's why it says, in clouds reaching silken like a nine-paneled screen with its shadows in a crystal lake deepening the green water. Then the golden gate, I don't know what's the golden, ah, the golden gate is a, so it's actually, uh, a golden gate is a viewing tower outside the palace, but here he's referring to just a, another, he's just saying, Oh, a stone door at the Lushan, which is like the Golden Gate, uh -huh. So the so the stone door at Lushan, at Mount Lu, opens in the two mountain ranges. Okay, so he's describing the what's going on there. So a silver, he's describing what Lu Mountain is like. So a silver stream is hanging down to three stone bridges within sight of the mighty tripod falls. Ledges of cliff and winding trails lead to blue sky and a flush of cloud in the morning sun when no flight of birds could be blown into Wu. So then now he's climbing the mountain. I climb to the top. I survey the whole world. I see the long river that runs beyond return, yellow clouds that winds have driven hundreds of miles, and the snow peak widely circled by the swirl of a ninefold stream. So wow, so this is like it's just it's almost like other, otherworldly or it's just on a different scale i guess the Lu is like one of the the is the huge and you know it's you can see the whole world you know the river never runs beyond return you know these clouds have been driven by like such a you know hundreds of miles the stream is ninefold so it's just on a whole other level whole other scale all right and then next and so i am singing a song of Lu mountain a song that is born of the breath of Lu mountain mm, interesting the song is born of the breath of new mountain uh well not exactly right so he's singing a song of Lu mountain and it is caused by Lu mountain now so it's not the specific part about the breath, but it could be, it could be. So when the stone mirror makes the heart's purity purer and green moss has buried the footsteps of Xie. So what is this going on? Xie Gong. So I think we need to see the illusion here. Oh, Xie Lingrun, another famous uh, writer. I think he wrote another poem on Lushan. Or he wrote another poem while climbing Lushan, Lu Mountain. So that's why the footsteps of Xie here. Uh, and so I have eaten the immortal pellet, rid of the world's troubles, before the lute's third playing have achieved my element. <laughs> what? Before the lute's third playing, I think it's when... And he has a, and he has before, okay. When he says achieve his element, it's like when he attained the Tao. I guess, because Tao Chu Chong, Tao is first attained. I think he's just saying the the mountain is very like, it's like heaven, <laughs> it's otherworldly. Yeah, and then far away, I watch the angels writing colored clouds riding colored clouds toward heaven's jade city with hibiscus in their hands. Angels, really? Immortals are immortals. I mean, they don't have angels in China. I mean, <laughs> ancient Chinese people didn't think of, have this idea of angels. Uh, so they're just immortals. And they're moving towards heaven's jade city. So that's like... This heaven, yeah, this this is heaven or no. Jade City is just like um like the Imperial Palace, but instead of the Emperor, you have the Heavenly Emperor or the Jade Emperor. So yeah. And that's where the immortals hang out. So yeah. Okay. And uh, apparently they hold hibiscus in their hands. So that's the last part. 
And so, when I have traversed the nine sections of the world, I will follow Saint Luau up the great purity. What? Okay, the great purity is the highest sky. So Luau is a uh, historical figure, but in one text uh, called Huai Nanzi, it says that Luau was traveling the north, the northern sea, and he sees a weird immortal then who encounters the wind and then he starts to dance. And then Luau wants to become a his friend and to travel together. And then uh and then the weird immortal says he just jumps into the clouds. I I wouldn't okay I wouldn't read too much into this. He's just saying he's just making a lot of allusions and he's just saying uh he feels like he's in heaven, basically. <laughs> Just, yeah. I don't know what it says to censor Lu Shu Zhong, though. Lu Shu Zhou. What's the deal with that? Bro, this is like, is this guy on drugs or what? <laughs> He's high on the mountain, yeah. High on the mountain. In every sense of the word. Okay. But, um, it's a good poem. I mean, it's Li Bai, so no way it's a bad poem. But, uh, yeah. Oh, Okay. So just looking through the comments, you say, oh, please do do the Taoist poems sometime. And you like the streams as well. Maybe I can do the premiere uh, for videos, for pre-made videos. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. Uh. I never tried it, but maybe I should. But you say we're doing weekly. I think I can do weekly streams, but weekly videos. Let's see. Uh, it's just neat. I'm graduating from college soon, so need to tie up a lot of loose ends so but yeah once i have more i do want to be more re regular in my uploading schedule just yeah please be patient but yeah and thanks for showing up for these um i guess just maybe to oh, i i don't even know where to start for this poem up. i mean I think this he's just saying the mountain is cool and I don't know man I don't know yeah okay why don't we look at famous critics I think that will help hmm I think this person thinks it might not be written by Li Bai. It might be written by someone else. So, okay. Interesting. So, they're all saying it has this Xian Qi, which is like the aura of a uh, immortal. And which makes sense because it's literally saying, talking about being immortals and stuff. But... I don't know, man. I, I, I really cannot find another way to read this except that he just feels like he, the mountain has, he, the being in the mountain makes him feel like he's in another world. Or I think that's the totally inadequate one sentence summary. And yeah. 
I don't know. I, I just I just I just don't relate to this uh his religious vision, I guess. So it's kind of hard, kind of hard to I don't really like it. I don't know, it's weird, but it's a good poem. It's a very random poem. <laughs> okay, just to oh here's a uh, some more comments say take my time and the weekly will boost my channel posting weekly and premiere will help people rsvp to all the videos that i premiere yeah i think i should premiere my latest video because uh if you have time please do watch it i feel like i i worked so hard on it and I was, i'm quite disappointed that less people well i mean actually quite a lot of people watched it but i, I did kind of hope that more there will be even more because I think it's like really good. Oh. Yeah. But it's okay. Lah. It's okay. That's how things are. I will try to premiere next time. It might. Yeah, maybe it would be a better strategy. And yeah, let's. Um, I think that's actually it for me for this week's poems. I don't know, they're, they're all really weird. Uh. The only one I really liked was maybe this. I mean, okay, there's a really good one. The very, this one, right? The, on the gate tower at Yojo. So this one is great, but yeah, I didn't really feel, I didn't really enjoy that many poems from today. But yeah, well, that's, the nature of it, uh, not every poem can be great. So, yeah, I guess that's actually it from me for today. And yeah, thanks for the people who showed up. Uh, I will be more regular from now on. Just was, yeah. And sorry for the, uh, the unannounced hiatus for the last few weeks. And yeah, I, I do hope to see you all next week at the same time. And thanks to everyone who showed up. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.